Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be discussing another non-contiguous memory allocation method called as segmentation. So, previous sessions, I have discussed all about a uh, technique called as paging. Now, let us see the other technique of non-contiguous. It is called as segmentation and this is the uh, setup segmentation diagram or the hardware for the segmentation given in the textbook. But before I uh, explain uh, considering the diagram, the whatever is mentioned in the diagram, let me tell you first exactly the background for this particular topic. Now, the word segmentation is like you are having a program, okay, and the program has got different segments. Let us take in a simple manner, you have the different segments. Normally, what was happening is from user's point of view, normally, suppose if I am typing the program, I am the user, from my point of view, it is what I, it is more convenient for me if I have to tell that, yes, my program consists of so many segments and each segment is placed in so and so uh, location in the me main memory. But in the paging, our users, our view, that means the user's view is mapped into what? Physical memory. But here, it is not like that. The users, the segmentation supports the user's view. So that's why I have written here segmentation supports user's view of memory. Whereas in paging, user's view of memory is mapped onto physical memory. So it is more convenient for the user also to see that how the different segments of a process are getting placed in the main memory or the space for the different segments are allocated in the main memory. So let us take one example here. This particular program has got four uh, seg uh, yeah. Five segments, one, two, three, four, five, five segments, okay, this is segment five, okay, five segments are there. Now, suppose if I am telling, okay, all these five segments are stored in the main memory. Let me tell you that, yes, all these five segments are stored, but from where it is stored, from which particular address it is stored, it's, it is it is like this very simple. Let me take, for example, uh, it starts from uh, some 2000, okay, fine, first segment. So, let us take segment 1 or segment 3 or segment 4 anything. So, let us take first segment because as and when we find a space available in the main memory, the segment is allocated in the main memory. Suppose first if the segment 3 is appearing, it is because that first segment 1 and segment 2 were placed earlier, then later when this memory space was available, segment 3 came. So, it is starting from 2000 and it is ending at 2500. So, its size is how much? 500. So, let me write segment size is, segment 3 is of what size? 500, fine. And what about its starting address? It is starting at, at from which location? It is starting from 2000. So, what I can do is, I can write like this. Its uh, uh, base address is 2000 and its limit or size is or in very simple words, first let me write size only, then I will tell you about the limit. It, it is having what? 500. So, this is for the segment 3. Similarly, now if I have to say the other segments are also getting placed, let us say some something is there here after this particular 2500 memory address, uh, another segment starts and it is ending here. Let us take it starts from 2700. Okay. 2700 and it is having a size of 300 that means it is ending at 3000 let us take this as segment 5 just randomly i am taking this is segment 5 it is placed here in the main memory so whenever the segments from the secondary memory are moved into the main memory that is what i am explaining here these segments are placed at different parts in the memory but what not of equal size partitions are there here this each partition is what the size of the segment whatever size that particular segment needs the complete uh, size or the complete partition is allocated to the segment so suppose if this segment 5 st st is here so here something else is there then we'll start another segment segment 2 Fine. Segment 2, let us take, it starts from 3200. So, I will write here the base address for segment 2 is 3200. It takes only 100, mem let us assume three, it ends at 3000. So, its size is only what? 100. This is segment 2. Then next is what? Segment, we will we'll assume that there are some other 
segments of some other processes then after that only this next segment starts from 3700 okay its size is 200 it is ending at 3900 so let us take this as segment 4 fine next one more segment because i have taken an example of five segments similarly that's why i want what i'll do is i'll place all the five segments in the main memory then we'll start one more segment that is placed here segment 5 it starts from let us take 4200 just randomly i'm taking it is having a space a size of 500 so it will end at 4700 this is what segment 5 so now if i am maintaining at what particular address each segment starts and what is the size of the each segment that becomes a segment table similar to the page table what you have learned in the previous session here you are maintaining what segment table the reason is now come to the diagram because the logical address is generating the segment number and the offset value previously paging technique was generating the page number and the offset value here the cpu will generate the logical address which consists of what which consists of segment number and what the offset value these two that's why if you see here the arrow direction the segment number is searched in the segment table now whatever segment table i have written here okay this particular table you assume there so it is searching whatever segment number suppose if the cpu is generating a logical address and the segment number is 3 then it is searching what segment 3 in this segment table suppose if this is the segment 3 which I am pointing here, then it will look here what is the size and what is the base address. Both this information are present in the segment table. And moreover, since it, the size of the segment table is there for every segment, that is the reason it should not cross that particular size. That means the limit value is used here in order, uh, we have to compare that limit value with this particular technique. So from where this I have to bring the arrow direction now, I have to compare the limit value with this comparator unit. So, how it will work? Segment, now I am taking one example here, segment 3. Where is segment 3? Segment 3 is here. So, its limit is how much? Limit or size I can use. So, limit value is how much? 500. So, that means if segment 3 size is 500, then the locations from 0 to 499 are valid for segment 3. And that is what should be one of the values in the offset or the displacement. 0 to 499 in this case let us assume if the displacement value is 250 segment number is 3 then in the segment number 3 okay here i am segment number 3 the offset value okay is 500 that is the limit size or limit means the same and the base value is how much for segment 3 it is 2000 limit is 500 base is 2000 it is present in the segment table offset generated from the logical address is 250 so first it will check with the limit value limit see offset is 250 whether 250 is lesser than 500 it will check here with this comparator unit yes it is true in this case then what it will do it will get added up with the base address base address is how much 2000 and what is the offset number 250 so 2250 it is pointing to look address 2250 in your main memory or the physical memory this is how segmentation technique is used to fetch an instruction from the physical memory which is located at, uh, at the address 2250 and why we are checking the limit is suppose in case if the displacement value is 550 then 550 lesser than 500 okay it is false so it is an error so that's why we write here trap addressing error there is an error here you are not going to cross the boundary of a segment your access should be always within that segment only that's the reason this comparator unit is used here then you add up once the condition is true that means once any instruction any offset value which falls within the limit if it is correct or if it is true then only you need to add up with the base address and then reach that particular location in the uh, physical memory or the main memory so that is the difference between what the paging technique and the segmentation technique paging will divide the process into equal size partitions and you are pla placing what the different parts of the process called as pages in the main memory here you are not dividing the memory into equal partitions 
instead you are having a program from user's point of view if my program has got five segments then all those five segments my view only i can see here in the main memory where it is getting placed where it is getting added so this is how this particular segmentation technique is used now remember the difference there the logical address consists of page number and the displacement value or the offset value here it consists of what the segment number and the offset value there in paging you are going to search the page table you are going to search the page in the page table here in the segmentation you are going to search the segment number in the segment table so this is all about the segmentation which is a non contiguous memory allocation method so there can be some numericals that can be asked on segmentation so i will try to cover in my future session such numericals so if you find this session useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care